what's going on guys coming to you from the front camera on the iphone like i said in nice lighting situations you know it's pretty good uh the reason why i'm not have not brought my camera out is because well i worked on the car and i don't want to get it messed up so pardon me for the audio or whatever or video quality whatever you got to say but oh man it's overexposed to the back see i'm using the, i'm using the good terminology overexposed in the back look at your boy got the gloves on from harbor freight um I'm gonna show you guys what I am working on. But first things first, I'm pretty much gonna let you lazy guys down. So if you guys were thinking that there's some kind of trick or cheat code or button that you use to get the work done for free, that's totally wrong. You're gonna have to put in work to get work. So it's technically not free, but just hang on and listen to how I get it done. Mike from Slow Speed. Uh, yeah, hopefully you sit around for this one. I know you guys out there, you guys kind of asked me how reliable are these cars, the F32, the F30 chassis. Now this one has a different motor from mine, this is a N20 motor, however, uh, the M55 motor, they all kind of, they all kind of have their issues, the M55 being a little bit more robust. I just want to let you guys know that this is 80,000 miles worth of driving, and these are pretty terrible roads, you can see they're working on stuff right back there, so the roads are terrible and they're only going to get worse. So this is what you see at 80,000 miles. You're gonna to need to replace the control arm, the tension arm, the strut, and uh, we're doing the brakes. I'm not sure when the brakes were last changed, but these are OEM struts on here. So 80,000 miles, you're pretty much shot on these crappy roads. You can see, uh, working on one of my boys, 428s. He actually needs a couple of things on it. But today, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to replace the tension arm, I'm gonna replace the control arm, and, uh, the brake pads so if you look at the brake pads they're not really bad believe it or not the rotors are very smooth on the front and the back there's no lip you guys can see so we're gonna go ahead and just change the pads and while we're down here changing the pads well or I should say while we're changing the arms we're gonna go ahead and change the pads but we found something up here so this right here is leaking she started this job last night, however, I ran into a couple problems. Uh, so believe it or not, these arms are extremely easy to take off. This one and that one under here. So this one just has one bolt that goes straight through, which we're gonna, I'm gonna show you, I think it's a 17. And that is an 18. If you guys seen my video on me replacing the M control arms, that's what I replaced down there. The other ends of the thrust arm and control arm meets the hub down there. You see, this is the uh, tie rod. But in order to get the other side of this out, I'm actually gonna remove the axle. So that's pretty much what took me long. I did not have a 17 millimeter Allen, which I don't think anyone really has, but so this is required to take off the axle. And if you already have the car jacked up and you're lazy like me, a little tip for you guys is to, uh, Go ahead and put something over the seat right there to cover it. Move the seat up and press the brake pedal so that you have brake pressure and you can go ahead and let that like so. Now I have that loosened up already. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to save that for now and I'm gonna loosen up this whole arm, the thrust arm, the control arm and pull everything out. Well, my car is rear wheel drive so I have free space to do whatever I want to. But down there, the axle gets in the way of the thrust arm and fitting a bolt on a control arm, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I haven't did that part yet. I've only did the thrust arm and found that it was hitting the top of the thing to get out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the axle. Oh, the door's already unlocked. Sheesh, they shine you drive so freaking close.
So obviously you can tell this is another day, but I don't know. Felt like I might as well go ahead and finish this conversation. Figured I might as well go ahead and finish this conversation with one, my car. You know what? Should I drive my car or should I take my sister's Jeep to talk to y'all? I don't know. Do gotta fill this thing up and clean it out a little bit. You know what? Yeah, I think I'm gonna talk to you guys. I think I'm gonna take my sister's Jeep, so. Gotta go turn off the 435. I filmed this a little bit. Whew, that stance is good. It don't get no better than this sometimes, y'all. So yeah, I filmed this earlier on my cell phone, obviously, to begin this video. I actually did the whole video on the phone. Yeah, I did the whole video on the phone. Uh, however, let me see if I some cash on me. But, uh, I don't know. I feel like I was rushing a little bit. I gotta get some cash for like the wash and stuff. Getting the Jeep ready for that road trip to Texas. Pretty freaking dirty. Let's do a car check right here. Let's expose Lay. What you got? Any new scratches? Whew, okay. I ain't gonna lie. She already did that. She told me it came with the car, but. I got the car with her. I actually picked this one out for her, so I don't want to hear that. She definitely did a little bit more damage in there. I told her I'd get it cleaned up, but yeah, looks like there's more since the last time, so probably no point. Other than that, pretty good. Pretty good. Back top, back. Engine drive, and we are off. Yeah, the cop literally decided he wanted to block the whole middle, so. Go ahead and turn around. I like this little thing. It makes me want like a little truck. And this ain't nothing crazy too. I did a review on this Jeep actually way, way back in the beginning of the channel. I actually did it right over here. Go ahead and check it out. If you guys just, I don't know, curious to see uh, the Jeep. But uh, yeah, well, that's when I was trying to find my niche or my expertise, which I'm still trying to find. But uh, yeah. We will see. I was telling you guys, we're trying to show you guys how to get, you know, stuff for free or get work done for free. Uh, explain to you guys, it's not really free, it requires work. But essentially, here's what I do, right? So I have a 40 hour a week job, you know, typical, uh, I guess you'd say nine to five type gig. And, you know, that covers the majority of the stuff, but sometimes I don't have to after they take out taxes and things like that, you kind of don't want to spend a lot of your money on car stuff. Or maybe you just that point where, you know, you're not making enough to spend your money on car parts. Uh, this is what I do and how I get a lot of my car parts or car work done that I don't want to do myself. Case in point, I limited slip differential. I could have put that in myself. However, it was weighed about 73 pounds. You needed certain special tools. I had the drive shaft tool because I replaced my drive shaft already. Uh, so I knew how to do that. It's just, I was reading up about it. You know, you gotta pop out the axles, which require you to, you know, drop the springs type of thing like that and go ahead and uh, slide everything over to put the dip. I don't have a lift, nor did I want to get down and dirty and do that. You know, it's really hot, it was a little busy. So I went ahead and went to my guys, the link is description down below. M Life Auto Care, and they went ahead and took care of that for me. Now, I think I paid, yeah, I paid like 300 bucks for them to go ahead and do that. But in turn, what I did was, like you've seen the video before, I actually went and did those uh, control arms and the tension arms for my boy in his 4 Series, which I knew how to do. I done it in my 435. So it's pretty simple. You know, nothing too crazy. Charge him a lot less than obviously a dealership or something like that would charge you because number one it was my boy and number two you know i'm doing a favor for him so it's kind of like one hand washes the other i did something i was completely comfortable with something that i like doing it was easy for me went ahead and used that for the m life job well i didn't use it specifically for that i didn't take the cash directly but i kind of put it back in my pocket from paying the guys at m life so what i'm trying to say to you guys because you guys might not understand or get the drift is do something that you love on the side, your hobby, something that you like doing, something that you know how to do uh, reliably and efficient, 
and you can use that to get car parts or you can use that to basically get whatever you want to get you know for me it's car parts i kind of like the fact that i know how to work on cars certain aspects of them are very easy to me so i can go ahead and work on my friends cars and they give me money in turn and i go out and do that do what i want with that money it doesn't cut into my 40 hour week paycheck now i'm not saying it's a whole business i'm trying to find this hand car wash I remember it being somewhere over here, but... Oh, there it is. Crap, I gotta turn around. Yeah. Pardon me, guys. But yeah, right now we are on Route 40. And I blew that stop sign. And if any of y'all know about over here, about 40, boy. See, the thing about this town is it's a small town. So, you see, look at this. Small, small town. This is Aberdeen. Oh, I missed it again. Small town. Look at this crap. So there aren't really many cops here, but the cops that are here, I'm pretty sure they get bored, you know? They get real itchy to do stuff and they see the slightest little thing. You know, they're willing to pull you up. Now, like big cities like New York, you could do so many things and it really doesn't matter. But here, they get you for anything because they, they want the action. They like the excitement. So you, know, you got to take it easy here a little bit, you know? But it's nice, peaceful. And it's, don't run don't run that road but there's a couple roads down here you can open up and you'll be pretty safe in all honesty so i'm gonna go ahead and hit the exterior first so one thing i like about this is they have an easy self-service this is like about five minutes away from my house so easy self-service type of deal now let's be real my sister she doesn't really care for her car at all so I mean, I know it's not good to use the brush, but I'm gonna be honest with you. This paint ain't in no good condition anyway. I might as well just go ahead and hit it with the brush. Uh, I don't know, my mind is telling me not to. I think I might, you know what? I think I might run the auto zone and still grab me a cloth. Those of you guys out there just want a quick extra bucks to go ahead and feed into your odd addiction, go out there, do something you like. I don't know, if you're really good with the camera, I love how this thing just records and doesn't overheat. But if you really go to the camera, go out, take some pics, go out, film some videos. I don't know. Make some money any kind of way. There's millions of ways out here to do it. There's a market for everything. I realize that. I've done a few things that, to get paid for that I wouldn't even have thought that it would have worked. It doesn't really seem like it. And then there's kind of a lot of people out here that's like flooding the market, it seems like, like mobile details and stuff like that. It's like so many of them. So I know, I can understand like the aspect kind of gets you a little, honestly, get out there, get your feet wet, do it, you know? I'm not saying do it for a full-time job or quit your own job, whatever the case may be, but just start, you know what I mean? Just start, do what you like doing. Let it bring you some cash. You do whatever you want with it. If you love going out to eat, go out to eat with it. I'll give you a little secret. That's what I do. Yeah, because in all honesty, I'm cheap. I'm real cheap. The way I pay for things or the style that I do things, it might be a little weird, but hear me out. I'll sit at work and I'll be like, okay, it's take, it took me an hour to get the X amount of dollars or three hours to get X amount of dollars. Would I trade those three hours of work in for this thing? That's kind of how I judge whether or not I want something or want to do something. And eating, like I said, food, I love it, but going out, paying tips, stuff, stuff, stuff like that, I'm cheap. So what I do is, somebody wants me to code their car or somebody wants me maybe hey, throw a little tuner you know something like that you know um i'll go ahead and say okay yeah i'll help you out you know, like you know in exchange for that give me a couple of dollars here and there and i'll take those couple of dollars and i'll go out and eat with that and that makes me feel so much better because i like going out to eat but i don't want to spend all those hours at my job and they tax that type of stuff and i kind of see that as a waste especially because i have a lot of stuff that i want to do in my life that requires saving you know i obviously like buying a place to live and things like that and buying cars so i typically only do stuff like that when i get you know little tiny jobs here and there to do and it, like i said it makes me feel a heck of a lot better i go out enjoy myself and i know as i'm walking home this didn't hit my bank account at all it's just just straight cash i got from helping out one of my boys and boom they kind of just bought me and whoever i took out for dinner that night you know and it's a heck of a lot better feeling feeling um don't trick your money away, I guess people would say, but um, I feel like I've always been like that. I've always found a way to make something happen if I want it. And I don't know, I kind of wanted to share the message a little bit because like I said, I want to give you guys the real 
with this car modification stuff, just a car guy's life type thing. You know, say it now, I say it again. I love doing modifications, I love doing everything, but that is not the only thing that's involved with this stuff. There's a whole lifestyle to it. And I'm kind of giving you guys little hacks or tips and tricks as to how I do things. I mean, it could be completely wrong to you, but this is just how I do it. And I like doing it like I do it. So hopefully that makes sense. And I hope you guys, you lazy ones out there, aren't disappointed. Like, oh, man, I thought he had some kind of scam or something. It's not a scam. You got to really put in work to work. Peace out, guys. And I hope you guys got the message and understood what I meant.